Hi everybody, this is Judy at Judy in the Kitchen. Someone asked me what medium I'm using to put my seeds in for my hydroponics. Well, I'm using rock wool. Now, I know that there are other mediums out there and they all may be just as fine. Rock wool happens to be what I started with and after I use this up, I just may go to something else just to try something else. But today, I'm going to show you how to use the rock wool. What you saw my seedlings in in the earlier video was rock wool and it comes in sheets like this, only larger. I have broken some off along the way and when you go to order them, if you order them online, pay attention to the number of cubes per sheet because it may vary some. This stuff comes in different sizes. This is a one and a half inch cube but that seems to be my favorite size because it fits very well in a two inch net pot that I will use in my bins. So that's a, a really important point there. It also comes in one inch cubes, which I found to be very small because they don't fill uh, my two inch net pot. And what I do if I happen to use those, and I will, so I don't discard them, I will use them. I'll fill the, the void, the space, with these clay pellets that I have that are also good for hydroponics. And again, you can use all sorts of medium for starting your seeds with. When you're going to use the rock wool, you just carefully break them off and put them in water. They have to be hydrated first. They're very thirsty little things. And I have filtered water that I'm putting them in. And some people will say to soak them for some extended period of time. I find that they soak up water really, really quickly. Now, I have gathered from reading online that some of them are more dense than others, thicker, and may take longer to soak up some water. So that might be the difference there. These are very lightweight. What it is, it's what it says. It's, it's rock wool. It's rock and chalk that was melted down, spun into fine fibers, and then formed into this little cube. It usually has a little bit of a hole in it that you can see there that you put your seeds in. And I'm gonna show you how to do this. I'm gonna go ahead and pull one out. And hopefully you'll be able to see what I'm doing. I'm gonna start some kale. This is Vates Blue Scotch Curled Kale. It's the type of kale you usually see in your grocery store. I've just got a toothpick here and I'm just kind of making sure the hole is clean and open. And I'm just wetting the tip of the uh, toothpick and you can just kind of touch a seed with it and drop it into the hole. I do like to kind of push it against the side and just because I'm going to put a second seed in there because I want to make sure that these germinate. So there's one. That's all there is to it. Now you, I will put it in a little um, container of some sort, maybe something about as shallow as this and put a little water in the bottom because I, I like to make sure that they're well hydrated. And then you put a lid of some sort over it and just uh, loosely, not really, really tight, but let's say I've got the lid on this and I would cock it so there's a little bit of air space on that so it can get some air. And just monitor the water level and just make sure that it doesn't go dry and allow these to rest in some place. Uh, you can put them in a dark area, you can put them in a light area, but what you want to do is as soon as you start to see the, the little seedling coming up, that's the point when you really do need to put it in some light. And the closer it is to the light source within reason, not right up against it for sure, but you do want to have it catching plenty of light and relatively close to it because if it's too far away, your little seedling will be on the spindly side and you really don't want that. Okay, you can see, whoops, that time I got two seeds. I only want one more. 
And then standard rule of thumb, well, that one doesn't want to grab, so I'm just going to use my finger. It's a lot easier to use the toothpick than your finger because it sticks to your finger. And now I'm going to push it down in there, and that's it. Now, if two come up in any one cube, I'm going to pick the healthier one, save that, and cut or pick out the lesser plant because you only want one plant per cube. Now you can wait until you see little roots coming out from the bottom and then you can place it in your net pot and you can place it in there so that there is a little bit of space between the bottom of the cube and the bottom of the net pot. Why? So that you give those roots an opportunity to continue to grow and make their way out the bottom of the net pot. You could do this later or you could do it right now. So since I'm showing you, I'll just go ahead and do it right now. It really doesn't matter. But you still want to make sure that these are in some sort of container with a little bit of water just to help keep them moist. And then when the roots start to come out, then you'll be able to put this in your hydroponics bin. All of these rock bowl cubes now have seeds in them. And since I've got them in the net pots, I had to put a pretty fair amount of water in this pan to make sure that the rock wool cubes would still have some moisture available to them. And I'm just going to cover it like that, just a little bit, just so they have some darkness until they start to emerge. And, um, and then they will go under some grow lights. In the meantime, I need to make sure I label what they are, and then we'll go from there. Well, I do hope this answers your questions about what I've been using to put my seeds in to start them for my hydroponics. Let me know if you have any questions beyond that. This is Judy at Judy in the Kitchen. Bye for now.